Thank you for coming for this uh, small little presentation of a little project we have been working on since uh, 2009. Um, first of all, uh, if anybody by accident get offended by things I say, um, please come and tell me afterwards and we can figure out what I did. Um, hi, my name is Morten, also known as Morten DK. DK uh, is normally a language code, though for Denmark that's not true. My language code is for the div killer. This is a mission I've been on. So, um, I have one little shop out in Copenhagen that does front end themes and stuff, that's all good. But today here we have three clones of Joel. <laughs> Joel is also a part of the front end group. Uh, we have Joel here. <laughs> we have Fabian. Fabian, raise your hand. Yeah. Fabian has been the brain behind a lot of this stuff we have done all. I've been sitting and whining to him about what was wrong and he then coded it. And then we have a part of our trick army, if you can raise your hand, if you've done anything on trick, you're a part of the trick army. Thank you for being here. Um, so, that's all good. First of all, why do we need a new theme layer? To make the front end just shut the fuck up. And what do I mean about that? Well, here's the thing. This is Drupal 7 and how it works in a simplified way. This is how Drupal 7 was architected. Two front enders by back end developers. We know what you did. We know you did it by the devil and it was only to piss us off for years. Um, and what it was in his thought was, well, this kind of, you know, wonderful, wonderful markup that we had that Drupal gave us out of the box because we all know that we need one markup. The last of you guys, just come in and sit on the floor in the middle. You can do that. I will not, not break on that. So this is kind of the markup we got out of Drupal 7, right, which can give us a lot of possibilities to board. Or, well, themers didn't like that. So, you know, it was a big, what the fuck is this? Um, because apparently Drupal 7 database queries in the theme layer is okay but having the element and the, the control over the CSS and markup is not. You could say that was a design flaw. Um, Drupal 7 also had this problem about you know, a high learning curve, especially when you come in from the theme layer, like, hey, I just want to build a site, I know how to do markup, I know how to do CSS, boom, welcome to Drupal, here's your pre-process, where do you find that? Thank you, Drupal, I will now hate my life for the next four years. Um, another issue we have is that we are slow. This is Drupal 7 in 2010. We're in 2014 now. If we begin to implement systems, there was serious talk about implementing 960 grid system inside of Drupal's core. Back in 2009, 2010, there was even a movement, and I know who were behind it, Clips DC, the North remembers, um, that this, they were trying to get this in. We even have people who wanted to have bootstrap in, son, the North still remembers. Um, and the thing about this, trying to put these systems inside of Drupal Core is that we adapt so slow. So when 960 was hot, that was back in 29, 210. We're now in 214. When Bootstrap was really, really hot, it's a couple of years ago. And our release cycle is not working that fast. So no matter what we put into Drupal Core, it's going to be outdated as soon as Drupal Core comes out. Um, basically, Drupal is doing it wrong. Um, we're trying to pretend we're something, but we're not. And that's a problem. And so what we figured out over years of discussion and discussion and discussion was there was like two ways of doing this. Is there three ways? Yeah, two ways. Only two ways. We actually did, um, we did a survey about six months ago and asked out for what people have of issue or what was wrong in the Drupal system, what they wanted and so forth. So forth. And what we ended up with was three different answers. There's the people who want to um, you know, have sensible defaults. Um, and, and that's like having a base class name and stuff that comes out of Drupal that they can rely on. And then you have the, the people who want to absolute freedom and do whatever they want. And then we have a third group that I think is people who just don't care. And we don't care about them. Um, so, but the common wish was this. We want to have a theme that's in control. We want to control our markup, we want to control our, our CSS, and if we get to it, and also get a new version of jQuery, that would be pretty ace. Um, so in comes the banana. What is the consensus banana? Well, you will now know. How many here knows what the consensus banana is? Not enough. You will all learn that now. Okay, so the consensus banana <laughs> is the result of many, many years of discussion that ended up at DrupalCon in Austin with about 25 uh, front-end developers discuss discussing, yelling, screaming, crying, and with a banana in the hand and pointing at each other, figuring out what it is that we want. We actually found consensus. Some would say that finally Morton, me, and John Alban sitting right there, finally figured out a common way of building their themes without yagging at each other. Um, so here's the basic idea. We have Drupal Core. Drupal Core puts something out. It puts out a bunch of variables that we would call like 
that, that we can then create stuff on. So we can create we can create markup, we can create CSS on it. And that is then we're going to carry. That's going to be our sensible defaults. So you can build seven on that. You can build Bartik on that. That's basically what Drupal Core provides now. But we put it in as a middle layer here in the middle. And why are we doing that? Well, because then when we have Drupal 8 coming out, it will release candidate 2014. We don't know yet when that's going to come out. Let's say it comes out first next year. That would not be so good, right? It, does it really have to have the light of day? <laughs> um, so uh, another way that, that some other people want to be like, we'll do whatever they want to, so they want to just grab the data directly from core, or let's say you want to build your stuff on a uh, base theme, <coughs> or you can do the same, but you don't have to rely on the defaults that Drupal provides anymore. Drupal will provide the tools for you to build your defaults, so you want to build a special class, you can do that. If you want to inherit what Drupal comes with, and so we have a reliable, stable base, we're going to have that. So we're actually going to have best of both worlds. Um, and that means that we are actually going to have a new theme in Drupal 8. <laughs> yes. It is called Classy. Classy will provide sensible defaults. And it do, though, require this. Dries commit alert. Because Dries has yet not taking his finger and pressing the big button that will make the theming world happy forever, ever, ever. This is the issue. If somebody has a phone and want to um, tweet at him, at Dries, and ask him when he gets this fixed, I would, I would not protest against that. Yeah, um, but if you see him in person, just ping and say, well, we want classy, get it in. There is, and there's actually reasons for this. Um, anyway, so back again to this. The idea here is that you have Jubilee, you have Clash, and then you basically, you know, if, if you build building on base themes, basically you have a Zen kind of theme versus the mothership kind of theme. So either you have something that's completely stripped of everything or have a bunch of sensible classes and structure that you can rely on. Um, that's the two different ways. So how many here knows Twig as a language thing? Okay, let's just go through it really quick because I'm going to do demos of it. This is a variable. This is a filter for a variable. This is how to get data in. So when Drupal used, was that too fast? Okay, sorry for that. Here's a variable. This is how you print it out. You can then add a filter on it so you can like modify on it. This is how we used to print Drupal stuff out. You know, Drupal, where's my thing with an und and a zero? And you know, looking for the data because you know, we don't want to give the themers too much control of the stuff, right? We need to keep them away a little bit. This is how we're going to do it now. We're going to do like, we can drill in with a dot between each of them so you can find that data you want. Sensible defaults. Um, this is the new translation tag. So if you want to translate a whole part of code, this is how you do that. You do that with the trans, 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 trans. That's funny in Germany. Um, so you can comment stuff out by adding a hashtag on each of these things instead. You have functional stuff, that's with the percentage sign. So you have an if and an end if. Uh, you, can do, you can set a new variable inside of, of a trick template. So you can set foo, print out the template that will give you bar. Uh, yeah, if foo, end if. Same again, we have loops. So if you want to have, uh, if you have a, an array of data, you can loop through that really easy. We have loop controls that goes here. I'm all going to show examples of this. You're going to post the slides too, right? No, 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 I'm going to hide them so only I know this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> the slides will come up, and yes, I'm also going to show you an example of this. All this is come up, coming up because I have so many demos of code I want to show, so that's why it's like just giving you an idea of this. All right, demo time. Um, I, I did have the plan about doing this live live, but I also know by when I tested it out three days ago and I destroyed my install because we're still not in, in a real version, that that's not going to be fine. So um, I've actually been doing a little bit of video recording. So um, let's go through the first one. This is debug. How do you find stuff now in Drupal 8? Well, here's my Drupal 8 site. And I go in and instead of installing all kinds of things, I'm just going to look at my source. Okay, where is this coming from? I have no idea, right? No idea at all. Where is this coming from? So what I'm doing, I'm going to go into my uh, sites folder into a folder called services. And there's a thing called trick debugging. And then I go debug, <coughs> true, yes. A little bit further down, and then we take cache and say false to that. Um, and then I go back to my site. I go come computer, back to site, back to yes. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm going over to our performance and I am, of course, clearing the cache because we still have to do that over and over again. 
Um, it's a bug we are working on. Um, so you don't have to do that every time. You will see a lot of times I do a clear cache from uh, to this demo. So what happens here? Can you see the green stuff? Can you see that all the way down? Now you can. All right, what is this? Oh shit. No, it explains to me where stuff comes from. What is that? Okay, let's look at this. File name suggestions. This is the file names that you can override this part of the template with. You don't know where that templates come from. Boom, core modules, no, templates, no, HTML trick. This is how you figure out where stuff comes from in Drupal. So that thing where you sit and hate life for a week because you can't figure out where stuff comes from, or like hunt down to people on, um, on RSC just to figure out where this coming from, those days are now over. It's site default services, YAML. I don't know why it's there and I don't care, I just know where to put it in. Don't put this, this in production, of course. Um, by the way, uh, there's an issue for Drupal 7, and uh, David, the maintainer for Drupal 7, agreed it can go in, so we will, at least for the templates in Drupal 7, have the same debug output. So if you find it, um, RTBC it, or put your plus one on it to get it in. As a Drupal 8, after the other, of course, don't think we should push these things back so we force people to go up to Drupal 8. That's a whole other thing. <laughs> that was a joke, brunch. Okay, let's install a new theme. I have a theme here called Utrasil, and you can already see how majestic it is, right? And it looks good. It looks good. So, how do we install a new theme? Well, here's my theme. Install as default. Okay, fair enough. What is in the theme? It's my Utrasil. Utrasil is a big, badass tree if you're up here from the Scandinavian parts, and you know that. I have, as you can see, this looks pretty much as Drupal used to. The config file up there we're going to talk about later on. But let's first look at our info file. So I have my link definitions as usual. I have my style sheets. I have libraries. This library points to Utrasil base. So as you can see here on the next template, the base here is I have a version for it, and then I have my JavaScript added there. And wait a little bit too quick, don't go back to it. I also had a little bit of, of jQuery, in, and that is going to be really sweet later on. And I have a very big style sheet for my new theme. Um, all right, so what can we do with that stuff? Well, here's just my new theme. It looks, it looks pretty majestic, right? This is Drupal 7, 8 in all its glory. Now, this is more to show you how you can do one of the things I really like to do, removing stuff. So here's all the crap that Drupal thinks it should put out to me. I don't need these style sheets because, as you can see, I only need one little piece of style. Um, style sheet remove is a new command we have now from, the, uh, from our info file where we can ask Drupal to say, hey, remove these uh, CSS files permanently, so we don't have to use that FOAD technique we used to do, you do where you call a, um, a CSS file that doesn't exist, so Drupal is dumb and forgets about it, you can actually just remove them. So in this case, I'm gonna end up only having my own, own CSS file and um, the last one, oh yeah. So here we have another common one, jQuery. I don't wanna have jQuery out in my output because I'm gonna <laughs> add a new version of it or I just don't wanna look at it. So I comment that stuff out of my uh, library, I reload my page, and boom, only my JavaScript file is there. That is how you basically manipulate the overall like, external files you put in, and that's how you actually exchange your jQuery version if you don't think Drupal 8 is fast enough in that piece. Um, so basically, stylesheet remove is a way to command and tell us this is the CSS files I don't want to have. If you want to remove or add in libraries, JavaScript libraries, you put that in your um, in the info in the uh, in the dependencies. And this is, by the way, book. I'm sorry for that. All right, variables. How do I look at a variable in this thing? Well, um, let's look at that. So um, I want to figure out how I can like, play around with my notes, and I want to stick things up. So um, how do we get that stuff in? Shh, just like. First, um, we have to have to install uh, Josh uh, Develop, the Develop module, um, and also here I'm using Josh to do that. Um, and I'm going to enable Kint. Kint is the um, it's like Krumo but just for Jubilee. I don't know why it's changed, and I somebody who's no stuff actually know that. But Kint is like the new way we're going to do this. So what I'm going to do here is I'm taking a variable say kints on it as a function, and I then add it just to pump out all the content so I can see, okay, what's actually inside of my content variable. Um, Josh CR is Josh, uh, clear, 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 
cash rebuild. Yeah, it's the it's the new CC instead of clear cash. It's that okay. So here I get all the, the different data I have directly out out of here. So I can see I have my field tax. I have an image. I have a body. I can even draw further down to it. And that way I can now begin to see what I can do with these variables. Um, um, and I can even go in and, as you see here, okay, what is in my tags? Because we're going to do some fun stuff with our tags in a minute. Uh, again, I clear my cache. I reload. Here we go. And here's all the beautiful data that comes out. What happened there with my screen? Um, that comes out of our, um, out of our tags. So this is basically how you inspect whatever is, is in your site. Um, that's all good and fine. So I have a template and I want to do overwrite that. I want to move stuff around. I don't want to do that with display suite or context or all kinds of things. I want to control it directly from my templates. So to do that, and this is now going to be really fun, is, um, does it want to play by itself? No. Here we go. So, um, Let's say I want to move the tags that's placed down here. I want to move them over in a column for itself on the left. And I'm going to have my images and all that stuff over on the right instead. Um, so I have two divs. You can see left and right. This is really advanced stuff. What I'm doing first, I'm taking the content variable and I say, okay, print this without the field tags. So basically, it's just going to prompt off everything that's in the content but without the content of field tags. Again, I clear my cache. And we go over and see what that brings us. Hooray. That was not like sexy and hard, but now it's beginning to be fun. So how do we overwrite that? Well, as we, as we saw earlier, I was doing the debugging. I'm going to go out and I'm figure out where does this come from, just within my source code. I have it here. Um, this, is my, this is where the fields come from, core module system templates field. It's a long way from home, so I'm going to find that. Oh, I cheated from home. I've already done it. Isn't that how you normally do it, like a, in a chef show? Um, we then um, take that template, come on, and then we figure out what name to actually give it so we go about it the right place. So, see here. As you can see, it has a little star out of each, but it has an X down the bottom. The X is the active template. So when you open up your source, you look into your template, and look into your source, like, what is actually active here? You can see that on the X, um, so you always have an idea of it. Let's see if I actually get control over this template and this is what's, what's loaded in. Um, so I gave it that long no, no field node, yada, yada, yada. Um, as you can see here, we now have control over this stuff. Uh, of course it disappeared. Um, and it now tells me that this file is now built from my templates and it's not built from Google Core anymore. All right, so next up in this is of course to take this markup and create something I want to do by myself because you know, that's what we do in the front end. We always have different things we want to change out. So I start off by just stripping things off as I, as I see them. This thing, I don't really need them. Let's see here. Move, move, move. Um, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, okay, my, I think my tag should be in a section instead. So by having them in a section, um, and what I'm going to do is, as well, just to see here that I'm actually not cheating. This is live code. So the, the next thing is to um, give him a little bit of classes that I know I'm going to use. Um, and then, then I'm going to do these loops. So I'm going to say, OK, if you're in the first loop, um, then do this. Else, if you're in the last loop, do, do this. If you are index number two, you're going to do something special as well uh, for you. Um, and then I'm going to take the item. The item is the thing that's going to be spit out and going to give us the data. And I'm just going to add a class to all of them. The last else command down here, uh, if I can find it, this one is like the defaults. Yeah, I speed it up a little bit because it took forever to set it right. Also, it looks like I'm really pro and know what I'm doing right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's face it, when you can record stuff, you can kind of stop and check out the syntax. So when you break your site four times underneath, I'm not going to show you that. Um, Anyways, here we go. Here's my new markup that I created. And look, Drupal didn't explode by not having 6,000 little elements in it. Um, so I've had a little bit of, of you know, I have an italic class down here, and I have some, some colors that I want to use. Um, so I'm going to add them in different places, just for the fun of it. So on my second, uh, 
second number of tabs coming up, I want to add that italic class. Let's see if that actually happens as well. So the blue should be only shit. And got its own little class, customized by me, the class name I wanted to get in here. Um, so let's do something out of this. Maybe a little bit dumb, but also fun. So you saw all these things are called different color names, and I had these color names in. So what we're doing is we're drilling in. This is another way you can drill into Drupal Core, into a, into Twig. We really don't, on when we're going to, hopefully, Joel says that we're going to have this fixed when we release. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm taking the item and I'm dragging it out only the title. This is not as elegant as it could be. I know I said that it had dot notations. Uh, this is one of the things, because Drupal, the way Drupal 7 was built, we can't do at this moment. We're trying to figure out how to do that. And here we have it in class names. <sighs> so um, and that's what CSS file. Here's another thing. Let's say, so I, up in my loop first, I want to do more fun stuff. I just want to do a count of how many tags I have. And I want to figure out if it's single or plural. And I just want to write that out directly. And I kind of don't want to write a preprocess function that does the counting. Because I kind of it thinks it's a little bit dumb to do that if this is just the front end. So I'm testing here in the loop thing to say, hey, if you have more than one loop inside of you, uh, more than one loop, you are tagged or you are tags. Um, and here, we see how clever I am. I'm actually testing on the index. Uh, that was not clever. Not on the count either. As we can see here, nothing comes out. I go back and I adjust my, my mistakes. Of course, the loop thing. How many, how many times have we looped through this stuff? Let's see what does it give us. Come on, wheels. Good stuff. Oh, damn it. I cut this off too early. <laughs> it's, it always happens. Yeah. Now you now you clap. I've just shown you how we whip through everything and do like uh, you made a mistake. God damn it. <laughs> That's fine. Um, anyways, that was the principle how to use a loop directly inside your template. Um, a uh, one little word of warning: if you are using user data as a class, you should use dash escape and then HTML atra um, because else um, users might be doing nasty things because the outer escape that trick has does not work for classes um, because you need a different escaping strategy for that. Yes. Okay. So um, another thing you saw before, I just ripped out one element out of the whole content. So let's look at that, how that looks when you want to do that more time. So here's my here's my field tags. And um, it's a contact without, and then you just have those field tags. Then by comma separating it, um, you can then begin to split up multiples of them. So I'm going to remove field tags and comments and the field image. I'm going to remove them from my content so that will never print it out. Um, and then I actually want to separate them out and, of course, print them out another place. Um, and we do that just by doing content dot and then the name of that field. Um, so here I want to put out my my comments on top of it, and let's go over and yeah, this was, should we remove the links as well? Yes, we are removing the links. And let's see what that does. Oh, but the wonders, the wonders of what we can do. Um, so this is actually basically just how you um, rebuild and you, you modify and you move stuff around in Drupal 8. Um, I do think this is pretty bloody damn hard, to be honest. Um, but it's not as hard as this. Twig blocks. So in Drupal we have a block, and in Twig we also have a block, because confusion would be good. Um, anyway, the Twig block is a part of a template that you can you can modify on. So let's say we have the front page of our site. We want to change that front page. We want to change just an element of that. That needs another header thing that says, welcome to my page. And I don't want to do that with blocks and configure all that stuff and have to fix that. No, I just want to do it um, in my template. So we do it like this. So I'm going to put a block in here. And what we're going to do, I'm going to do a define block first. Um, and I'm going to give it a, a suitable name for this session. And it's called Morton E. King is awesome. Yeah. That, is, that is my block. And my block is going to have a div in, in with it. I know I'm the div killer, but this is kind of the just to show you may also how stuff can look. Um, I'll give it a green class. Um, 
add a little bit of text to it. Hi, I'm a trade block, and I'm here to rock. Um, so as you can see here, we do a block and an end block, and then I give it a name. That name we're going to use in a second. Um, so what it does do here, like it just got to print itself out. We have not yet told the trick system that you need to do something with this. So the way you do that is you look at the place that puts all of this data out, that's my page, and then see, okay, which of these templates do I want to use to do this? I have the page node, or I have the page front, or the, the page email. Which of these places do I want to override this part of, of my site? So I go over here and I just copy my, my, uh, my, uh, from my page HTML trick file, I copy my new block. I'm now on page front HTML, copy that block out. Then I do the magic of extent. Um, and this is the second I couldn't remember the, uh, the uh, the exact syntax, so I'll cheat a little bit. There we go, extents, not extent. Um, themes, so I'm pointing to my theme folder, Ucrasil, which is my, my theme spot template and page HTML, saying, okay, this file, when you hit page HTML trick and you, are, uh, you have a call to page dash dash front, at that point, exchange this part to, of the template. So let's reload the page and see what happens. So you can see I'm now on the front page, it's blue. Let's see what happens when I go into another place. It's green now. This is how it ex extend on every all of your templates. You can do that all the way down to a field. So you can begin to have a, you can really begin to crap your things up. Um, just one little note on that. Um, you put in the full path there, and you can do that. And, but we have, uh, I'm pretty sure right now, and I have to test this out, um, just to make sure that we actually have this working, that you should be able to put the path uh, relative to the place you are. So if you have all your templates here, uh, page HTML twig, and then you also have your page front HTML twig in the same folder, you shouldn't have to put the whole path in there. And you can also reference um, other you know, base themes um, with this add symbol, whatever the name of the base theme is, and then that name of the variable. Um, so there's a, a number of ways that Twig will look through the file system to find the right template. And um, yeah, we have that in there. I just have to test to make sure it actually works. Yeah, yeah we extended it that um, where Twig is only looking at the file system and it will pass that it's a little more droopily, you can reference base systems, your own system, etc. And the reason I did this was actually because it wasn't working and I felt like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was the it was a couple of weeks ago that's code was from. So alright, so um, Here's a really sexy thing. Uh, add and remove classes from a node directly from a template. What does that mean? Well, this is a part of the banana uh, consensus that we want to be able from our template to control everything that comes out and give us a class name from Drupal. So the Drupal system will give us different variables that we can work with and then set a template. We can add classes and we can remove classes from our trick file. So how do we do that? Here's my node, and I'm going to expect this. And I look through it and say, okay, I have all of these classes. And we all know that, of course, I don't need them because what would I need them for? So I want to change them to something specific if they Or I want to change, I want to have node, I don't want to call it a node type anymore. I would call it like uh, content type because that's how I normally say it. I don't get confused about it. This is not hard coded anymore in. And you see this, con this uh, what do you call that sign? Tilde. Tilde. So tilde is just a content type and add, then the node function, which is the name of the, of the content type, and then this clean class, as Fabian said. So I'm going to take that part that's bearable that Drupal have sent us, and we can then add it in to our, our classes. Let's reload the page and see what happens here. Boom. I have now overridden and controlled Drupal's classes. Drupal has no more control of what my classes is anymore. That, I do think, is pretty goddamn sexy. Um, and here's the thing, you can, still, you can still do all these things, you can still just have it as Drupal puts it out, but I can control it as I want to, no matter where I am, what kind of class that comes out of Drupal, that we have a method to go in and replace and remove them. Um, so what I want to do here is I'm just going to test on my node. If my node is placed on the front page, what I want to do, I want to give them a specific class, and if it's not on the front page, I want to give it another class. It's a common example. So what I'm doing here is saying, okay, is front, that's our variable. And I do a question mark, which is like an, an if else. If it's, if it's front, then do is front, then the uh, colons, and then not front. 
Uh, and here, by the way, you're going to see a beautiful error on the city. Um, I removed the rest of this data because we don't need it right now. No, screw that. And let's just see if we can add a front class on it. <coughs> kill my cache again. Go back. Kill my, my kin because we don't want to reload that. So, not front and what else? What else? Uh, command method, and look at this. This is now, we're not in the front. What do we think that happens when I go to the home page? Anybody? John? Can you guess? And there we go is front. So we can now control our classes from the template layer directly without Drupal doing anything in a pre-process, anything from a module. And let's say there's a module that adds a class like, hi Morton, I hate you class, which I'm pretty sure Drupal does regularly. I can then go and detect that class and remove that crap. And the reason for that is, let's say you have, you are working on a, on a, a CSS uh, with a like bootstrap or foundation or whatever uh, kind of CSS framework you're working with, that has a class name that Drupal also uses. Then you're gonna have a conflict, you don't wanna have that. Then your theme, you can go and you can remove that stuff, or you can change that stuff, and then we can actually, you, can, you don't have to have different um, themes and CSS frameworks to battle with each other. Um, just to that same point, uh, there's some people working right now to separate the classes that are actually used for JavaScript from the classes that are used for presentation. Um, so the classes that are used for JavaScript are turning into data attributes, hopefully. Um, we're working on that right now. Um, but that allows you to know, like, oh, I can remove this class and it won't affect my JavaScript just blowing up. And so we're trying to yeah. make a chance. Ah, uh, see, yes. Yeah. So, and if, you, if you're a developer and you get really, like, freaked out, like, hey, my module should add a class because I need that because something, something, something. Well, here's how you do that. You go in, you have, we still have the add class, we still have the classes you can add in. That uh, array is object, whatever, that thing, the class uh, object is still there, so you can still add stuff to it. Just from the theme layer, we can, we can, uh, we can work with that. So from a module developer perspective, or developer perspective, you have the freedom to do what you want, and from the theme layer, we also have the freedom to do the what you want. So that whole thing of us clashing and not figuring out what classes and stuff we want to have in, we have removed that, and that is because of the banana. So that's why we love the banana. Um, okay, here's the thing. How many here loves to do menu theming? <laughs> John Alban is the only one who put his arm on. By the way, uh, everything around that's wrong with Drupal 7's theme layer is John's fault because he was the only <laughs> themer who actually worked on it at that point, and that means we can assign blame to him. Thank you, John, for your wonderful work on Drupal 7. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is one of the things that we got in about last week, and this is the reason I have to, to trash all of my old slides, because this is so goddamn sexy, you won't believe it. Let's look at this. So I want to theme a menu, and this would normally make you hate life for weeks, right? So I go up and I look at my menu and say, okay, what is going on here? Let's see, come on, yes, here we go. So here's my menu, and I call up from here, it's a theme menu, and I have only two template files. Could this be, could this be we only have one template file for a menu that has everything in it? This is a leading question. Anybody? Okay, so we open up the menu so that let's see what is actually in there. I uh, put that over, I'm gonna throw it over my theme, and then to so I do a nice little folder called templates, and I drop it down in here. So I don't wanna override all of my menus, I only wanna override one menu, and that's the main menu, right? That's okay. the only one I wanna touch. Um, so here we have menu, dash, dash, main, you can see the pattern system every time you wanna override anything. Fuck. God damn it, is it? <laughs> So the stage is falling apart because apparently this is too hot for it to handle. So anyways, so here's my, here's my menu template. I have this one menu template that I renamed it to menu, 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 dash, dash, main to override it. And this is my evil laughter when I was coding to figure out if this actually worked. This, is one, um, this has been a thing we have been working on, uh, talking about for years, actually for two years by, since DrupalCon in Munich has been on. I just want to do something with it. Okay, let's go down to here. So we have. This is a macro we call, we're gonna call it We're not gonna talk about macros right now, uh, but we can do that later on. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say, okay, if you're at the menu level, uh, zero, I wanna add in a specific class for that. 
And it would be really awesome if I could add in, you know, a class for each level on this without having to call four different preprocesses and, and figure out where to push this data. I have all of my data right here. Um, so we're using again the attributes add class. Um, so if I'm on the menu level one, I want to add this class. If I'm on any of the other levels, what I want to do, I actually want to tell Drupal, tell my CSS which level I am on. So I could do a menu, menu, dash, dash, level, dash. So you're just pumping in my, um, up here we have menu level that comes in, so that I want to use directly. And then we're going to save. We build cache again. It's getting kind of tedious to do that people cache. I think like my, my left hand had I had that in. Just gonna say in the future, just go on. Okay, here we go. Um, menu level one. Ah, how many hours in pre-process did this take to, to, to do it back in good old days? Uh, another thing I wanna do here is I'm gonna add another class as well. You know, um, add a menu level root. To level one, so I know this is my level one. So I can always always go go directly in. This also reference by the way to a talk John is going to do later on. We're talking about and this is also about how we have defined our new uh, CSS documentation that we have. Uh, if we have time for it, I can point to that. I took the demo files first because I had an idea that would take a long time. Um, all right, let's clear the cache again. Let's see what happens. So um, I found, out, found figured out why for putting this leaf on is always a thing I've been hating in Google, like this leaf class. See, we can actually remove that as well. Um, you can see it's flowing around here. And let's go out there and fold stuff out. Holy crap, is this actually how Google looks? And let's, let's kill a little bit more classes just for the fun of it. Because that's kind of a thing I like to do, be able to customize my own things all the way down. Um, the thing we figured out that we might gonna have to work on is figuring out a way to detect if a module or a, your template has classes inside of them, but that's gonna be a, a thing we're gonna work on later on. But now we have a menu that I have defined exactly as I want it with the classes. Yeah, should we kill class as well? I think we're doing that. This is my menu out of Drupal. One menu, one template file, and I can do with it what I want. Is it now we clap? <laughs> So, uh, for example, number two in the way of a theme. Uh, on, that, on that same note, um, the Wiener worked really hard um, to get that in there, and I was this is probably my favorite template in there because I remember trying to use theme tree, uh, theme menu tree. Um, theme menu tree does not have any context, doesn't have any variables. Uh, it has a UL and the glass menu, and you can maybe change that if you want, but that's as much as you can do with that theme. Um, this now allows you, that, that level thing is almost impossible to do in Drupal 7. Like, not totally impossible, but it's almost impossible. And that makes uh, uh, your menus a lot more flexible in what you can do with them. So I just kind of want to give a hand out to the Wiener and, and all the other people who worked on that. Uh, this is not an easy problem. We, as, as I said, we talked about this. Yeah. Since, since DrupalCon in Munich gets two years of discussing and figuring out how to make this work. Um, here's another whole example, the pager. Besides of John, who likes to theme a pager? <laughs> okay, if I say to you, a pager is now 67 lines of template code, and you can do with it what you want. Oh yeah, exactly. So let's, let's look at that. Let's inspect our element here. I have my pager, and it puts out this. By the way, we have, so the class names here, we're trying to do like the whole CSS naming scheme, how we're doing that. Um, so it's all pretty, it's all good out of the box, but let's say I want to do something specific to it. So I, 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 yet again, I do my whole copy the template over, renaming it. Here I just kind of overwrite all the pages in the world. What I'm going to do with all the pages, I'm going to remove that um, UL LI because I want to do it with span tags instead because that's just how I want to have my, my markup today. Um, so let's take all the, the uh, LI tags, remove them, make it to a span. Here we go, close them as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, we should have them all now, good. Let's kill the cache. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, let's say uh, the page item, if it's, item, if it's active, let's, let's put a green class in it, just so you can see, I'm actually not faking this. 
And that's uh, you know that again. That's your pager, people. That's our future of the pager. It looks like this. I can add and remove my stuff as I want to. I can detect of what I want to, and I can work with it directly as I want to. And this is the map I'm putting out. If I want to move these class, if I want to put H1 tags all over it, if I want to do something completely different, you have all that in. I actually wanted to give a shout out to Lawi, who is sitting right in front of here, and, and Ruben for kicking ass on this subject. It has been a pain in the fucking ass for years to do pages. It was kind of the most hatred thing I could get as a front end. I'd be like, uh, by the way, the client has to get this on the picture. And like, God damn it, it's going to take me 40 to 60 hours, and people are going to think I'm a bigger moron than I used to be. Now, I actually have direct control of this file, and there's even little comments inside that say, hey, if the Eclipse next, if I want to do something else than having three dots, I want to have a little emoji icon there. I just put it in. That is a piece of beauty. <laughs> So this is just a basic thing. Here's another thing. You know what I love by doing a new theme? When I, when I move my theme, I have to get all of my image styles with me, have to reinstall them. I do it normally in a feature. I move them over to Drupal 7 and then something breaks and I hate my life. Here's a sweet thing about um, CMI that I was not aware of until a couple of months ago when I was like, I wonder if I can install an image style directly with my theme. So here's my Drupal 8 Bartic version and it has an image in it. And just to see, show you I'm not cheating, this is my image styles. Directly vanilla. Fair enough. Um, I don't have any, any styles at all. This is all Drupal basic. What I want to do, I want to install um, an image style with my theme. How do we do that? Well, up here we have, in the config, I have an image style. My image style is called Odin because of your know, Odin is badass. Um, and this is a, it's a file that's gonna, you, you can work in with it. So let's see here, about it. Here's my official theme, installs. Let's go down and look at my image styles. Oh shit. I installed an image style directly with my theme. So now when you pack your themes, you can actually move your image styles around. Yes, that can see the light of day. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, now let's reload this. Here's my, here's my, uh, is my open um, style. Let's say I want to go in and modify it. I don't want to desaturate it anymore. I'm just going to delete that. No reason to have that anyway. Um, so what I want to do now is I want to make sure next time I install my theme, I'm actually going to update my image style. So my image style now looks like this. It just resized it to a thousand times something something. I now can export them. I go up to image styles, and I go down, and I find image settings. And somehow it gave me a false. Let's try that again. <laughs> so, oh, Drupal load. Drupal, yes, here we go. Here's my code. So this is, this is the, CM, the configuration code that Drupal will bring in. And the image style Odin YAML file is the thing I want to paste it over to. So I cover the stuff over and I paste it in. I removed the UID on it so you don't end up having issues with one side. It's not belonging to another side. It caused me a pain in the ass for a long time. So just to show you off, so this is all, I'm in, uninstalling my theme, uninstalling the um, image style, <coughs> delete that. Because you know, when people show me videos of this, I always am pretty sure that they're totally cheating on it, just like, down that as little animations in there. But it's actually not, so now I don't have my classes anymore, all right. All right, so we install, we install the Microsoft theme again just to see if my image styles actually change this time. Let's see. Have to reload the page of course to see them. Let's change my image style back to Odin, which I updated just before. I'm going to save, save it. I'm going to go over to the page, reload it, see if it changed. Voila. You can now import and export image styles with your theme. You can actually do a lot of things here. Uh, you can change field settings and stuff, you shouldn't. Um, but there is possibilities here that we've got to just only trust in, in the layer. So that's a new wonderful little thing. Besides of that, we have a ton of new shiny things. How much time do we have left? Five minutes. Five, oh geez. Okay, so this is gonna be big. So here's the thing, you saw that the theme home is that we have now added logic so you can put your themes into the themes folder in your course. I know it's like, it's crazy. 
You don't have to like look look like the new kid anymore. So that's where it belongs. I have sad news for you. If you are into um, i6, i7, or i8, um, Drupal 8 is not going to support that. We're sorry for that. We're going to go straight up HTML5. <laughs> here's, here's another little detail that I used nine months of my life on and that add, added, um, uh, kind of threatened people even in the issue queue. IDs, though, a note with an ID on is no more. This is how an article looks now. If you really want to have your article have an ID on, this is how you put it in. So those five people in the world who want to have an ID on their note to select because that's a thing we really use, you don't do that anymore. We remove almost every goddamn ID we could find. Woo. Yes. Here is another little one. You all know the form that has that diff inside of it that we really need? <laughs> it is gone. <laughs> this was my first patch ever six years ago. I got it out. Yes. Thank you, HTML5, by the way. Um, documentation for CSS, how Drupal 8 should be written as CSS. We actually sat down and talked about that from a front-end perspective. Which methods do we want to use? We're going to use Smash and we're going to use some BEM naming. John, who's sitting right here, is doing a session later. When? Uh, tomorrow at 3. Tomorrow at 3, talking a lot about this as well. He's been like the lead on that, so we actually have a decent naming convention. Um, JS prefix, so if you have a class, that JavaScript puts out because you need it, then Drupal is now going to prefix that with JS. So you never again, when you kill all the classes from use, make, make sure that the Ajax call doesn't work anymore because there's actually a place that says, hey, JS, don't remove that. Um, what not, though, is saying that you should use data attributes instead. This is also known as the theme of don't fuck this class up. Um, but using data attributes instead, that makes it, makes it secure. The logo is no more logo block. Oh, yeah, we've got a new theme engine. Theme functions are dead. I am so sorry for that. Um, we have templates instead. We actually have a lot of templates. So developers who's trying for that, I will, you can try in a big cup, and I'm going to put coffee on that and enjoy it each morning. <laughs> template files instead of functions. It's a big thing. Um, actually, in Drupal 7, we have 55 templates going out, 154 different functions. In Drupal 8 right now, we have 21 functions. We are hopefully going to have zero team functions when we go to uh, release candidate one. And at this point, we have 149 templates at last count. We're trying to minimize these. It's a lot of work. Um, but that's. Drupal 9! <laughs> <laughs> so, zero functions and zero templates in Drupal 9. <laughs> um, all right. So, um, normally you will do that, the question thing. What I'm doing right now is a quick FAQ of questions that we got over the last couple of years. The first one is SAS and Drupal 8. I know that 90% of us use SAS. No, we're not going to have SAS down in Drupal Core. As you saw first, how you can remove your CSS file and then do what you want. So that's just how it's going to be. Seven in Drupal 8, why is it not called 8? Well, here's the thing. Seven is a name. It's actually a string. It's not a number. So that's why it's called, I mean, you don't rename your kids one, two, and three, right? So that's why it's called seven. OK, headless Drupal trick. Okay, holy crap, can we get more buzzwords into one sentence? <laughs> if you're doing headless Drupal, you kind of figure it out yourself. PSP template, what if I really want to use PSP template? Well, you can still do that. You can set the theme engine to PSP template. You can then rewrite all of the theme uh, uh, templates uh, and the functions and the add remove class and all the other stuff and then figure it out. So have fun. I don't know why we pack it in. Um, here's the thing. I've accused John for epic fail in Drupal 7 for years. He was actually just trying to like not make it suck a lot. If it fails, and I got this question a lot of times, if this fails more now you have been dealing about this for five years and been trying to push this forward, is it your fault? Yes, it is. And I will take full responsibility for that. Um, bootstrap and call, nope, that's not gonna happen. Uh, there's an issue for this that has a lot of uh, front enders going really ape shit. Um, so no, that's not going to happen. That's actually the whole idea why we are going to do this banana principle by being able to add in what we want and what we need directly from Drupal Core. Backport uh, trick to Drupal 7, have fun with that. We're not going to do that. Uh, drag and drop UI. So you saw that whole, whole thing while I was like moving stuff around. Well, um, in Contrib, we're probably going to have to create some kind of module that actually detects if you have overridden everything because there is some UI controller still in Drupal. Um, eight. One of the discussions we had way back was how do we want to have Drupal 8? Do we want to have everything controlled by a template or should everything be controlled from a UI? The, um, besides of 
one person two years ago in a room about this size where we asked that question. There was one person in that room that wanted to have that UI because he was uh, most likely a dude who was com uncomfortable by working directly in the templates. Um, that was the only time we have heard from a front-end perspective that anybody wanted the UI. So that's one of the decisions that we're trying to push everything into templates. Um, another thing I heard, that's a question I got from, uh, from one person yesterday, was like, is, is Scandinavians or themers the loudest? So I just kind of want to figure that out. So um, can I get a sound from the themers? <laughs> okay, can I get a sound from the Scandinavians? <laughs> Even John. <laughs> Oh, right. I have Swedish blood. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so that's why we have that much beef. <laughs> All right, so Drupal has the hashtag Drupal trick. Here's the thing, if you think that what we have done so far is pretty awesome or it's pretty much fail and want to help out, and you do want to help out, because we have a long road still to go, we are far deep down where we want to be, and actually we're further down than I thought we would be. Uh, hashtag Drupal trick, we use that on Twitter to like announce stuff, but there's also the IRC channel that we're using, and it's kind of the place to do, the, do all that stuff. Um, the, reason, the reason we don't just call it trig is, first of all, it's impossible on Twitter to use trig just as a word, and it's all not to be confused with you know, the trig project. Um, another thing, tonight, my friends, we drink. Why do we drink? Because we only have one goddamn menu template. We only have one page. We can actually <laughs> control our class names now. We can override everything Drupal puts out. We can detect on it, we can taste on it. That is a piece of beauty, and that demands for celebration. I do know that we have also a bar call tonight, so being foresightful as I am, I have pointed to one of the bars, the pub, as it's called, that is at tonight at 7 o'clock. So come and hang out with us three beautiful people, hopefully also our trick army up front here, and talk with us and figure out what else we're going to do with it. And yes, it's going to end up uh, being a it's part also of our uh, pub call. Um, we know that at the same time there's also the uh, the women in Drupal meet up, um, and just kind of collapsed. That's why we, I'm pretty much going to stay there more or less all night. So just if you want to, if you want to yell off us for removing all theme functions, you can do that there, or you can uh, you can buy your other drink for, for doing add and remove class. Uh, the prod is placed here, and that's that's uh, you can also if you have that little um, what's it called uh, the little map, it's also on there. It's like one of the official Drupal bars uh, that we're going to use. Um, Right after this, doing lunch, and I know it's like, God damn, I need some food. We're going to do a buff down in G11 and try to like plan further out what is it that we're going to do, what are we going to do for the rest of this DrupalCon, um, because we're going to be keep coding on it. Even more importantly, on Friday uh, at the at the coach sprint, even if you have no experience whatsoever by doing a coach sprint, like, what am I going to do here? The thing is that we're trying to make the template system work in a way so you, as a front ender with no goddamn knowledge of Drupal at all, can work directly in it. So that, so as a developer company, if you just have a dev dude who knows how to do that, has to do Drupal stuff, but you just want to have the front end be pretty, you can begin to work with that directly as a front ender. And this is one of the things that I see that's going to be. The, this is this is by the way, this is the kill I have in Drupal eight and why we're going to have a shit ton of new people coming to it. Because you're not going to get a hammer in the head the first time you go in as a Drupal front end and be like, hey, I just want to change this. You can now find stuff, you can edit stuff, you can modify it. And that's pretty goddamn awesome. The, that buff is all the way down here at the end. Um, so I would suggest as soon as we're um, done talking here, unless there's questions, uh, grab lunch, come down there, and we're going to make a, a plan for everything. Um, Drupal trick is the hashtag, and um, that's our little project. By the way, uh, Funded United is going to be in Bristol 18th to 19th of April next year. Uh, the group behind Funded United just decided that because that's how we do that stuff. So now you know uh, where to come there. And with that, thank you all for coming. Uh, any questions, please come up with them to us. I will have to and all kinds of fun.